theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, and this is theCUBE, our flagship program. We've got through the events. Make sure to see them from the noise. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Check out Wikibon. We just released a new report on software-led infrastructure. Of course, software-defined is all the rage. We've defined that. Uh, we've got a ton of information there on Flash, which is relevant to our next topic. We've got Ashish Gupta, who's the director of marketing of Violin uh, Memory, who's a, a hot company, doing an IPO. Uh, all the buzz in Silicon Valley is around Violin. Ashish, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. Yeah, so it's good to have you on here. So you're a big partner of Dell's. You've got a presence in the, in, the, in the booth here. You guys move a lot of product in partnership with mm -hmm. companies like Dell and, and IBM and even HP. Mm -hmm. and, uh, uh, and, and so, talk about, give us a quick update on, on Violin, what's going on here at Dell World, and then we'll get into it. Absolutely, so Violin's been uh, obviously present in a lot of uh, events outside. We've uh, announced a partnership back in August with uh, VMware. Uh, since then we've had our presence obviously at Oracle Open World, uh, at Sapphire and SAP, uh, and now we're Dell as uh, another strategic partner of ours. Uh, clearly the, uh, the idea is that uh, the position that Violin's in is it's a unique position. We obviously go after the traditional storage market, but our partnership on the compute side is absolutely relevant to the, the new generation of storage that's being brought out to the market, that's being led by Violin in that space. Uh, the idea that Flash is going to create a, a wave in the storage industry is absolutely foundational to everything that Violin does. Um, again, if you, if you recall, what we have, we're bringing up about to the market is essentially storage is the speed of memory. Um, if you look at what Flash does, it's almost memory-like without all the drawbacks of memory. We've got essentially persistency, economics and shared nature that we can bring in. And if you build a system from the ground up like we have, you start bringing some compelling economics to the market. And that's the reason why working with Dell and other compute partners of ours really brings a fundamental difference to the, uh, to the customer base. So the question that, came, that comes to mind, actually, we, you know, we're, we love Flash. We yes. have cover you guys, Fusion IO, so, uh, Solid Fire, another startup, Aerospike doing some in-memory stuff, kind of the same uh, related trend. It's a mm -hmm. mega trend, mm -hmm. and you guys are out there leading the charge. Michael Dell talks about the data center of the future, this modern infrastructure. How do you guys fit into that? I mean, obviously, caching layers, and people talk about, oh, Flash is caching layers, but it's just more than that. Could you just drill down and just share with the folks what's mo why, where you fit in this modern infrastructure, Yep. and are you just a caching layer? Because that's really what people think of when they don't really do their homework on Flash. <laughs> that's a great, great point, John. The, the idea of uh, Flash as a caching layer is actually a bit of a misnomer, and uh, if you think about really what the data center is today, it's, it's got a lot of components that are really taking it to the next level. We've talked about data center transformation over the last five, six years, and certainly on the compute and networking side, that's you know, born true. Uh, the storage uh, element is sort of lagged behind everything else, and Flash has sort of brought in a little bit of a spice and excitement in that market. However, if you don't do things right, it kind of leads it to that special place called cache today, and which is read centric workloads, et cetera. We feel that that's sort of short, short changing what Flash can do. It's low hanging fruit. It's low hanging fruit and works for particular market segments and for people that want to protect an existing business. Clearly we're not you know, hampered by any anchors of a protect exploiting this market that we're trying to you know, go after and you know, sustain our ecosystem around. We want to go out and disrupt that. And that's really what Flash is doing for us, is essentially allowing us to really take that media and really bring it out to market as a new tier of storage, if you will. And the idea is that memory and memory computing that we started talking about is, is interesting, but if you look at what people want to do, it often causes applications, other environments to re-architect re themselves to fit in that ecosystem. What we're saying is you can get memory-like performance with storage-like economics and storage-like infrastructure environments. So you bring in that same application that you're doing today, but get the memory boost if you build an infrastructure like ours, which is a foundationally re-architected solution that's taking flashes of media and building a new generation of storage around it. If you add that into your infrastructure, what you end up getting, and like Michael Dell was talking about, is a true silicon data center of the future. And that's, that means that the last vestige of non-silicon environment, which is storage, really can be brought into the 21st century, or 22nd century. So you're essentially saying, if I'm inferring cor correctly, that you're developing software on top of that architecture to exploit the new technology, the persistent memory-like technology. Can you describe, is that, first of all, is that correct? So, and I'd say if you, if, you, if you look at what Violin has done, we're, we're, we're a nice hybrid between a software and hardware company, mm -hmm. right? A lot of our IP is actually hardware accelerated. So, if you look at the system, we actually have a custom controller that's on the, on the actual uh, array, and there's actually 64 of these controllers on the array. A lot of the IP that we do is embedded in that controller. And so, what that does is essentially allows us to go out and scale 
and bring our software IP that we have, accelerated hardware across in the entire array. So we are a software company in that we have got a lot of innovation, mm -hmm. but we actually hardware accelerated. So That's the only way you can actually bring this whole memory-like infrastructure to you. So com compare and contrast that to somebody that is, you know, I'll just say it, bolting on yep. flash to yep. a traditional SAN controller. Specifically, how are you different in terms of the value that you deliver to customers? So there's two ways that people add flash today, right? If you add it at the controller layer, you're primarily doing it from a caching perspective. You know, the cache gets warmed up, your service reads through that environment. If you add it to the SSD environments with their standard legacy ar array with a controller and then an SSD shelf underneath it, you get a certain level of boost. Absolutely, no problem there. However, the legacy infrastructure is designed with spinning disk in mind. The buses that those controllers attach to have a certain bandwidth associated with them. Those buses get completely loaded up when you bring in a shelf in there with an SSD or uh, a bunch of SSDs in it. Meaning the controller is completely saturated the moment an SSD gets introduced to the market. When you're buying a spinning disk environment and putting SSDs in it, that controller is being, I'd say, inoptimally utilized at that point in time. That's where we come in. We basically change that economic model. We were designed from the ground up, and so what we do is bring in an array like ours, which is completely designed for flash, and what we do is, because it's designed from the ground up, give you latencies that are equivalent or almost in memory-like environment. So you get microsecond latencies that are sustained, resulting in you know, really fast response time. So when we're trying to get real-time analytics done, that's, what that matter, that's where latencies come into play. Now when you're trying to fit into an ecosystem, you want to be able to be storage-like. So we are a traditional stand environment. We'll give you fiber channel, InfiniBand, iSCSI with 10 gigs, and then traditional shared storage infrastructure like look and feel. So you get memory and storage combined into one. Without disruption, I mean, essentially an application sees a exactly. single level store, essentially. Absolutely. Uh, so uh, you, you, you mentioned analytics. Talk about um, what you do, or do you do uh, anything for something like a use case in HBase, for mm -hmm. example? So if you look at what people are trying to do in HBase or any big data environments, et cetera, it's really about getting access to information fast. And the idea that you know, what Violin is trying to address is really around two parts. Um, most of it is around latency, which is basically compute. If you look at compute utilization or CPU utilization, it's looking at really the I.O. wait times. That's, that's a big challenge today. Utilization is 100%, while in reality, it's, it's, it, the, the compute's actually doing a lot less work. The processing time may be 30, 40%. Most of the other time, it's waiting for I.O. And so from a, from a pure big data analytics perspective, the faster we can service those requests, the better it is, which is going, going back to latency. That microsecond latency we're talking about, that's exactly where we fit in perfectly. The other part of it is, how much of it can you do in parallel? And that's the IOPS discussion. And so when we look at what we do, our three-year form factor delivers a million IOPS. That means there's enough parallel streams we can handle in addition to the latencies, allowing people to process a lot more data. So we have many customers that are trying to do a whole bunch of real-time analytics in our environment, primarily because there's real value to it, and they're doing it without disrupting their environment. So how are customers um, getting value out of this? What's the, you know, what's the business case? I mean, Flash is more expensive than, than disk, uh, but so people are gobbling it up. <laughs> you know, yeah. Help us understand that and, and where the business case is specifically. So uh, you bring up a great point, Dave. The economics is a, is a funny thing. If you look at traditional spinning disk environments, yes, it's a dollar per gig conversation. But you look at where traditional flash is deployed, it's, it's set, or flash is deployed in traditional environments, it's been the caching concept. And it's been this expensive you know, thing you bring in to solve a particular problem. The way we look at it is that it's an application issue. We have SLAs that customers are trying to achieve and meet. And when you look at that environment, you say, okay, I've got a requirement to deploy a thousand desktops, or desktops that have to have equivalent or better than real desktop environments and virtualized infrastructure. That changes the game. Now you're looking at operational efficiency in the back end and saying, okay, I want to give a, an end user a desktop-like experience that is better or equivalent than the current desktop in a virtual environment. That means that I.O. has become critical. And so you're moving the conversation from a dollar per gig to a dollar per I.O. environment. If you go on that route, we're absolutely the most economical solution that's out there. The second part of the value is that if you look at what the value uh, flash or, or legacy storage brings in or doesn't bring, flash changes the game from an application economics perspective. We can come in and reduce the compute resources that you need to run the same application. In fact, in some cases, we can reduce the actual application license requirements you have. So you have ROI that you can get all the way through from compute to application side that can be essentially calculated and added on to the OPEX value that we come in by reducing the legacy spinning disk infrastructure that you have 
the front end the I/O requirements. Yeah, and and start to deliver, you know, bottom line productivity. Absolutely. All right, Ashish, we're out of time. Okay. But, uh, yep. Thanks very much for for Violin coming Memory by. Systems, one of the hottest startups in Silicon Valley right now, really dominating the flash business. Uh, still private, um, going public soon, uh, as everyone's been speculating and talking about. Uh, Don Basile, uh, rock star CEO, we've been following his career for some time, and uh, congratulations on all your success. And uh, Flash you. is the future, it's the no-brainer, it is part of the modern infrastructure. We're covering it, we love Flash. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante, we'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.